the mad thing is, arguably the most impressive car here is actually the other side of that glass. Comment below if you think you've seen it. Anyway, hello one and all and welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome to the ever impressive DK Engineering. Whilst there are mind blowing cars lying around all over the place down here at DK, I'm here to check out one car in particular and it's parked just outside. Welcome to the exceptionally rare and arguably quite exceptional Bentley Continental R Project 116. This is a one-off special commission from 1997 ordered by a man called Carlo Talamo. Maybe that name suggests the fact that yes, he is Italian and I think only Italian or a Brit could have ordered this thing because back in 1997 it cost 1 billion lira. 1 billion! For those of you not up to date on your European history, lira was Italy's old currency prior to the euro. In today's money, that means this thing would have cost about 500,000 pounds. Yes, a standard Continental R was about 250,000 pounds in Italy. So the guy bought a standard car and spent the same money again turning it into this project 116. Now it is way more than a lick of paint and a special bonnet as the price would suggest. This is a completely bespoke one-off car from factory. Bentley built this themselves as ordered by Carlo. And before we get into the details of the car itself, a little bit of a history lesson as to who was this man, Talamo? What, like, what possessed him to think, you know what's a really good idea? I'm gonna go and spend one billion lira on a Bentley. As an Italian, if you'd spend one billion lira on a Ferrari or a Maserati, you'd probably go, ah, oh, yeah, makes sense. But you don't often get Italians spending that much on Bentley. But anyway, Carlo basically introduced Harley Davidson to Italy. He was one of the sort of main importers and he was so successful at that, he then moved over into Rolls Royce, who at the time also owned Bentley. Now, whilst he was a successful guy, his kind of, well, one of his dream cars was an original Bentley blower, you know, the sort of 20s Bentley race cars, the huge great things, but they're effectively priceless and he was realistic in the fact that he probably would never be able to buy one himself. It's like me and a Ferrari 250 short wheelbase. Like, you know, I, I would love to own one, dream amazing car, but unless I win the Euro Millions, probably not gonna happen. So he thought, why don't I create a sort of modern day homage to the blower? Take a Bentley, Continental at the time, and make it a sort of thoroughbred, all out, brute race car. And that is what this thing is. Because yes, as I mentioned, the length that Bentley went to, to turn this into the Project 116, this bespoke creation, were extreme. Now, some of you may actually recognize this car because it was recently owned by a semi-famous Instagram car collector who goes by the handle Automobili Amos. He's the guy currently reimagining Lancia Delta Integrales. You may have seen him on the Grand Tour, but yes, he owned this previously, and so pictures of it have kind of floated around the internet for the last 18 months or so. Whenever I saw it, I was like, that thing looks amazing. What is it? And so hopefully today in this video, I will explain what it is. Uh, let's kick things off with kind of some of the, the key identifiable visual elements that make this different to a standard Bentley Continental of the era. The main thing is this bespoke brushed aluminium bonnet. It's obviously got various sort of cutaways and intakes. We've got a big mesh grille overlooking the engine. We've got an accessible engine oil filler cap, which I love. It's kind of hinting towards that racing heritage. You can just top up the oil whenever you like. Talking about mesh grills though, you'll notice at the front here, the main grill has been replaced because usually Bentleys at this time and Continentals at this time had sort of upward straights, almost like a Rolls Royce grill. But instead, Carlo and Bentley decided to put this mesh grill from the Bentley 8, which was kind of like an entry level Bentley at the time. In addition to that, you'll notice that the actual 
inner headlight has been replaced by a mesh grille because that's now an air intake, a nod towards Alfa Romeo's, old Alfa Romeo's that Carlo also loved. I really like that element. We can't look at the front and not talk about yellow because of course we have those two huge yellow fans. Fans are always a part of the Continental but painted yellow they really stand out especially behind that mesh grille. It's also the only Bentley that you'll find that left the factory with yellow Bentley badges. Slightly redesigned front bumper. Uh, moving on, we've got bespoke wheels for this car with, again, yellow Bentley badges and a few more yellow details. Uh, a few stickers have been added to this car over time, but the actual racing round, or the big white dot, as you guys like to call it, was painted on by Bentley at the factory, so that's pretty amazing to see. As you make your way along the car, you start to really notice the stance of it, how wide those wheel arches, those flared wheel arches are, just sit so nicely on the road. Uh, got another big roundel at the back. Um, the exhaust, which sounds super nice once you actually open it up. On startup, it's not that impressive, but get over a few revs, it really shouts. And then around this side, we've got a sort of racing fuel filler cap system, which actually is not that practical, but looks amazing. Over and above the way this thing looks from the outside, it's also pretty damn impressive inside. The doors have a really satisfying thud. Now, while some of these elements may look relatively recognisable from Bentleys of this era, actually most of them was bespoke for this car, but so successful that Bentley then copied them and applied them to other models. So this sort of knurled aluminium dashboard was a, a, a creation by Carlo and the team for the Project 116, and then it, it appeared again in the uh, in the Continental T. Um, also, quilted leather everywhere. So much supple quilted leather. Hadn't been seen in Bentleys before, but now obviously a big firm favourite, especially with the Mulliner specs. Uh, a starter button, stop start button, big red button there. No radio, because the big thing about this car is the weight saving. Uh, we've also got these sportier seats, uh, harnesses, a roll cage, and still some beautiful wood. It's racy, it's purposeful, still a Bentley. Now, as you can imagine, given the lengths that Carlo and Bentley had gone to with the visuals of this car, they weren't going to let the performance let it down. So yes, the engine went off to Cosworth for some tweaking and we've got new camshafts, new turbo, new intake, a whole load of changes that meant this car was putting out 425 horsepower and wait for it, back in 1997, 670 pound foot of torque all dialed in to kick in at around 50 to 150 kilometers an hour. Realistically, the most useful range on the road. So this thing is an overtaking weapon. I don't know if you can hear that spool, but it is so exciting because out the back and when you've got the windows down, this thing is a grumpy, angry brute. It shouts, it hurls but then inside and when you're stabbing down on the throttle in that kind of peak torque range, you just get this shh, it's amazing. Now, whilst those performance upgrades are impressive, the other standout feature about this car was the weight saving that Bentley achieved because they managed to shave 200 kilos off the Continental. 200! I mean, that's just, I freak out about a Challenge Stradale. That's only 80 kilos lighter than a standard 360. 200 is next level. But what I love about this car is it's kind of like the perfect combination of British and Italian style and engineering and thought process. Because whilst you probably had the Italian going, hey, I want it to be light and purposeful and nimble, the Brits were like, yes, but it has to remain a Bentley. Because despite the fact they got rid of those rear seats and there's no radio and all these different elements to bring that weight down, oh my God, that van was going around that corner so fast. I, I really nearly had a heart attack there, sorry. Ooh, okay. Despite the fact that this car is lighter, it's not smaller, we'll come back to that in a second, but yes, what I was trying to say was that whilst you had the Italians, you know, pushing in one direction, the Brits, or Bentley themselves, were still trying to keep a bit of luxury, a bit of quality. I've definitely picked the wrong road to film on right now because I know that's not big enough for me, mate. Um, he's trying to make a gap for me. I don't think he realizes how big my car is or how expensive it is. Thank you so much. Whoa. 
<laughs> why Britain why with your small narrow roads take me back to America oh now there's trucks coming deep breath Sam you can do this now this this is the problem I think we, we, we oh my god that is huge there's a did that come across on camera I'm in a one billion lira Bentley people come on oh. thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you Almost ready to give up, I'll be honest. Almost ready to give up. What was I saying? I don't even know. Uh, something, something about the fact that yes, Bentley managed to keep that that air of luxury and, and quality in the car despite shaving off weight and increasing performance. So we got all this leather, this beautiful wood. Because all the way around the cabin, it's like being in a boat. I love this wood. And so there's no rear seats, there's no radio, but it's still a very nice place to be. And they didn't fundamentally change the suspension that much because it wanted to, well, it needed to still be a comfy ride. These seats are supposed to be sporty seats for this sports car, but they are some of the most comfortable seats I've ever been in. Harnesses, really unnecessary. I, I would get rid of the harnesses pretty quickly, if I'm honest. I like the fact there's a roll cage because it ties into the overall theme of the car, but yeah, I, I would just prefer a standard seat belt. But it's the kind of thing I would love to do a modern day Mila Mila in, because it just, it fits the, th that identity, that idea. And that's where I think really this has to be applauded because it was the vision of Carlo really brought to life by Bentley. I think they did such a fantastic job of interpreting what was probably quite a crazy request. Guys, I want to make a one billion lira. Well, he probably actually didn't he didn't specify the price, I doubt. I highly, I highly doubt he specified the price. But saying I want to create this kind of unique bespoke creation and Bentley didn't go, oh no, no chance mate, go, go off to West Coast Customs. They did it in-house and they created something beautiful. I've come into like a cul-de-sac, a little, little housing estate and I'm very happy with that because there doesn't seem to be many other people around and I can just take a breather because that was scary on those roads. This car is just huge with the flared wheel arches and then that long bonnet and... <laughs> I think we've established that whilst I feel like this car looks the part, and of course it has had significant performance upgrades, it's probably not at its best on very tight English country roads, or probably even around town. But I have finally found a road to kind of exploit what this car is theoretically all about. Because as I mentioned before, this car was sort of tuned to perform at its best between 50 and 150 kilometers an hour. And here we are on an English dual carriage. Now let's see what this thing has to offer. <laughs> oh, that soundtrack is hilarious. It's all turbo. It's all turbo. Nord to 60 is supposedly around five and a half seconds. I'm not sure it quite felt that fast. It, yeah, well actually we're going pretty, we're actually going pretty quickly. I should probably ease off a little bit. It's kind of delivered in this kind of like elongated sledgehammer hit. It's kind of like, I think to overtake this thing must be incredible. But it's it's such a sort of juxtaposition, this thing. You look at it and you think, what an absolute behemoth. But it is still such a smooth, enjoyable ride. Oh, here's a corner. But, oh. You know what? To be fair, went around that corner, right? And here we go. We're away again. <laughs> the red line's only at four and a half thousand RPM. But yeah, that noise, that <laughs> from the outside, you get all rumble. I mentioned it earlier, but inside you're just dominated by that huge turbo. Oh, <laughs> it's a hilariously cool car. It is a hilarious, oh, I just, okay, onwards at Doroma. But comfortably, sir. Most comfortably. How do 
I sum up this car then? I don't really know. For me, it's kind of like, it's more than the sum of its parts. Does that make sense? Like, it's about the idea and the realization of that idea, the sort of fact that it's, it's actually a thing that makes it greater than maybe what it is, because time has moved on and fundamentally it's not the most exciting, exhilarating car to drive, but it doesn't really matter. Because it is a Bentley and because of the weight, which let's face it, is still over two tons, um, you want to waft. It doesn't employ you to drive fast. When I was just, you know, hiding on those little back English country roads or in, back in, you know what I mean, the small little roads, um, I was very happy going slowly. It just felt nice. I was enjoying myself and thinking, what a cool car I'm in. I think it's, it's got to be applauded and it, it would sit right in someone's big collection of wacky cars. Would I have it myself? I don't know, but it does motivate me more to create a modern day version of this because Carlo, what a legend, when you know what, I want my dream Bentley, let's go out and make it. And I keep talking about doing this with a modern day Continental GT, clearly I should just suck it up and go and do it as long as it's not gonna cost me one billion lira. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you've learned something because as I said at the beginning, I found this car fascinating whenever I saw pictures of it on Instagram and I wanted to learn more. So huge thanks to DK for firstly teaching me, but secondly, allowing me to get out and film with it and drive it and experience it. Give it a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come.